Hello everyone, welcome back to the YouTube channel and today we're back with the penultimate episode of the book of Boba Fett and what a sensational and phenomenal episode this was. I'd arguably say for the nostalgia, for the story, everything building up to the finale, this could be one of the greatest episodes I've ever seen of Star Wars. It was pure Star Wars at heart and there was some great moments in this. I'm going to talk about it in a minute. So. If you're not up to date with Boba Fett, all the reviews are on the channel, the first five episodes, seven episodes this season, of course, with the huge finale next week. And I'm hoping it to be about an hour. Uh, subscribe and like so you never miss a Star Wars related video. Comment for anything else you want to see and comment what you thought of this episode. Pure Star Wars, I'm telling you. Brilliance. Uh, so let's jump straight into the video. So at the start of the episode, we got reintroduced to Cobb Vanth. The guy who wore the Boba Fett outfit before we got the reintroduction of Boba Fett in season, I think season two of Mandalorian. Uh, but yeah, he was back. He had a run in with the Pikes and obviously showing his amazing skills and killing them. It was great to see him return to the screen and be almost recruited later in the episode by Mando. I'm going to leave that section of the episode to the end because what an episode what a part of the episode that was i mean every part of this episode was huge we had obviously mando who had left fennec at the end of the last episode to go and see grogu and oh my god the first time we got to this planet i was like what can we expect are we going to see luke are we going to see grogu we got so much more than that the first character we got to see on this beautiful tropical <clears throat> island was r2d2 you know he's been in everything you know and to see him because we didn't get to see him obviously at the end of season two finale because it was just luke taking rogu to see him was truly brilliant and the nostalgia was absolutely insane to see him and it's really to see him on screen with bando two you know iconic characters in this universe now and then it got better you know they walked on a bit we got to see this building getting built uh, by these robot ants and you're thinking, oh, we definitely recognize that place. I believe that is the building where Kylo and Luke have the small face off, eventually, you know, down the line. Um, but obviously, they are rebuilding the Jedi Temple, and I'm frigging so for this. And <clears throat> before I was jump into everything else happening in this episode, we are definitely going to see a few spin offs happen in the Star Wars universe and the Book of Boba Fett. And the Mando Lorian have been used as these Cedar series to build on other series. Like Boba Fett has one appearance in this episode with no line, which is crazy. Two episodes of Boba Fett and he's barely ever appeared. But I think it's smart because the finale of the episode, obviously Boba Fett's got a huge involvement that Mando's finally going to go on his way. And I don't know if they'll ever interact again. <laughs> but there's possibility, you know, you never know. Uh, I mean, obviously... They, they build Mando this bench, but then you think, what else could come on? You know, you know Luke's going to pop up at some point. You know Grogu's going to pop up at some point. Ahsoka rocks up out of nowhere. Like, oh, my God. I started I freaked out there every time one of these characters appeared because you're thinking, the fact that Ahsoka's here, the same place where Luke is, two people you never thought would ever interact on screen together. Anakin trained Ahsoka. Luke is, a, is Anakin's son. The fact that these two are on screen together shouldn't really happen, but it does. The allies for the Jedi Force, and to see them to obviously unite, reunite, um, obviously because they're in Mando season two. Together. Mando season two was full of cameos. This episode has every cameo going. You had, as I said, R two D two. You had the guy at the start. You had Ahsoka, <clears throat> and then it got better and better. Did a bit of one on one conversation. You had Luke Skywalker things, by the way, in this period with Grogu training him. And over the episode, you saw the Dagobah resemblance. You saw. When Yoda was teaching Luke, Yoda was mentioned many times. We saw a Order 66 seed, which was brilliant. Dave Filoni loves showing these scenes. It was really cool to see more Jedi's against the Stormtroopers. <coughs> Clone Troopers, but sorry. Um, just everything about this episode worked well. Um, and then as you the episode go on, you saw Ahsoka and Luke unite on screen for the first time ever. Oh my God, it was one of the greatest scenes ever. To say he's a lot like his dad, that line was brilliant. Um, Ahsoka said another line like my family's here or something you know it was ambulance you know to she saw Anakin as family the Jedi's family Luke is part of that family Grogu who 
she's been able to witness a few times throughout the series and to see Grogu's training sequence where he was jumping to and from the rocks and that thing that was flying around that trained Luke in A New Hope with Ben Kenobi it was just pure nostalgia what else would rock up in this series to make us go crazy um, the theory like I said I discussed last week between Han Solo Kylo Ren and Chewbacca Rockin as well is going to be not happening Kylo Ren doesn't exist at this point well I, don't, I think he probably exists you know what I'm saying but he's not a Jedi because they talked about the first ever shoot in the Jedi Temple trained by Luke. So Kylo Ren doesn't really exist in Luke's mind. Um, and to see their scenes all for this episode, the CGI is done brilliantly, because I believe it is Mark Hamill who's doing the bodywork. Uh, there's obviously stuntmen in there and stuff in there, because I think he did like a flip at one point. But yeah, then when he sits in the um, Jedi Temple for the first time when it's built... Um, he gives Grogu the option and shows Master Yoda's lightsaber, which again, that was incredible. Given the option between this little Mandalorian armored outfit or a lightsaber, and obviously we're going to see, I, I, I'm a strong believer, we're going to see a Luke Skywalker Grogu spin-off show. And he'll pick the lightsaber, but he'll end up growing into the Mandalorian outfit. I'm pretty sure he'll learn the ways of both Jedi and Mandalorian, which I think is going to be purely brilliant we know mandalorian season three is going to be a massive focus on mandor and they're just setting up the seeds ahsoka she leaves luke and obviously she's got her own show coming out this year and she's hayden christian's returning so is she gonna have a face off with vader once more isn't that brilliant that she's literally leaving luke to then um go on her own quest obviously vader's dead at this point i'm saying like but it's really cool that we got to see her with Luke. And then there's going to be flashback scenes. I don't know what they're going to do entirely with Hayden Christie's character in the show. Obviously, it's going to be Clone Wars flashbacks. But I'm just so excited. All these characters going off in their own different direction. We got a scene, obviously, with Mando, Boba, Fennec, the Gamorrean guards, bikers, the Wookiee. All these characters building up for this fight. And then, of course, obviously, you've got Mando meeting up um, with, um, I think, uh, Cobb. Cobb Vamp in the, the desert, the desert village. Um, they had a really good scene together. You know, tried to bring him, swing him onto his good side. He knew the galaxy, their, their world would be attacked by the Pikes because obviously he's had a running with them, but he didn't mention it. And this is where the big scene comes in. Mando leaves. You know, they said they'll he'll speak to the people and see what they say. And then this is where the biggest reveal of the entire show comes in. People have been talking about this reveal and the possibility of happening. I never saw it truly happening because I just didn't want them to shy too much away from Boba Fett. And a bit late, you know, the entire last episode was full Armando um, and Phantom Menace nostalgia. This episode was Clone Wars, Jedi, Luke, uh, just so much nostalgia in general from the whole Star Wars universe that we got a bounty hunter from the Clone Wars series and it's obvious that it's Dave Filoni who introduces him to the Book of Boba Fett. Never revealed his name because you don't have to reveal his name. We all know who he is. Cad Bane is in the Book of Boba Fett. And I can't believe he's, I believe, the villain, the main villain of the Pikes. And what a reveal. We all know who he was when he had his hat down, but then he, got, he showed us the red eyes. And it was like, holy shit. Cad Bane is here. Luke, Ahsoka, Grogu. Yoda mentions uh, the training sequences, R2, everything. This episode had everything and great build-up as well because he did go back to Tatooine to deal with the threat that's coming in the next episode. And the fact we're going to see Boba Fett v. Cad Bane in the next episode is unreal. I don't know if Cab is dead. He was shot once and the other guy was shot multiple times. So the other guy is probably dead but there's a huge chance he will be in the next episode. But I'm so friggin' excited. This episode, just when I say pure Star Wars, this was just unreal. It had absolutely everything. And I'm so grateful it was like a 48-minute episode. They balanced everything every, everything very well. There's so many spin-off ideas you can do. See, uh, uh, they've set up series. Um, and yeah, Dave Filoni, John Favreau, Bryce Dallas Howard, they've given us two amazing episodes back-to-back. -back. In a show that gave us so much nostalgia for Boba Fett, 
in the flashbacks and bridging the gap between Return of the Jedi and his return in Mandalorian. And I'm just so grateful for how well this season has been crafted. Yeah, I agree. Maybe these episodes should have been done in Mandalorian season three because, but it's about what you want to think about. What would Boba Fett be doing in the last two episodes? They've kept it relevant because obviously the Fennec talk again in the last episode and obviously a meet up with Boba Fett in there. They've kept it relevant and connected everything properly. These guys know what they're doing. A very, very good job. And it's probably my first ever 11 out of 10 episode. It was absolutely pure nostalgia and phenomenal. The story is good as well. I'm not just talking about nostalgia. The story underlined to it was good. And I just the fact I got to see my favorite Star Wars character return was pure brilliance. Thanks for watching as always. Let me know what you thought down below. The finale is out next week. So let's get hyped for that and then build from that aiming towards the most anticipated show of the year, Kenobi. To see you McGregor put those robes on one more time as he battles against Hayden's Christens, Darth Vader. I can't wait. Stay tuned for all the Star Wars shows and content coming from my channel by subscribing, liking, Comment, friend, if that's what I see. Take care. Goodbye.